Linear time invariant systems are a category of systems that are constrained in the types of behavior they can have. Before you can understand what a linear time invariant system is, you sort of have to understand the idea of a system. A system can be defined as something that has an input and an output relationship. So we define a system with an input and let's classically the input is written with respect to u of t. This is not the unit step function, that's just what the input signal to a system is. I know that can be confusing, it overloads the term unfortunately. And then a system here is something that will accept that signal and it will produce an output. It will change the signal in some fashion and have an output and that output is classically described as y of t. So a system is, is this literally a black box, or in this case, a blue box, that will take u of t and change it into y of t. So there are many types of systems, but the specific type of system we're talking about here that's most amenable and easiest to understand are linear time invariant systems. Now that means something, right? That means that they are linear and that they are time invariant. And these are called LTI, so LTI. So what does it mean to have an LTI system? An LTI system, right? So let's look at the question of what linearity is. Linearity is the property of being linear with relation to summing objects, right? Summing inputs as well as scaling them. Right, summing or superposition. What this means is that if you have, in, in, an, in a linear system, if you have an input u1 of t, and you have another input u2 of t, You pass u1 of t through the LTI to the, to the, through a linear system, you get out y1 of t. If you pass u2 through an, a linear system, you get y2 of t. Now, what it means to be linear is that then if you take y1 plus y2 and you add the two signals together first and pass the sum through the system after summing them, that the output will be as if you just pass the individual ones through first and then sum them afterwards. So this is what it means to be summing in a linear sense. Then there's the idea of scaling. If you have the same function u of t and you pass it through a linear system and you get out y of t, then it's also true that if you took a scale factor, say alpha, scaled u of t by that, then y of t would be similarly scaled by the same value. And thus you can put all of these together into one final equation and write down the general property of linearity, which is that a scaling of the, an input up, plus a scaling of a second input, these added together are going to output the scaling of the output plus a scaling of the second output. And this is very useful because that means you can break down any arbitrary combination of inputs into their constituent separable parts and understand how each individual part passes through the LTI system and then add them up all later to get the final result. Very useful. At least this is true for all linear systems, not just linear time invariant systems, but this is true for all linear systems. Now we can talk about time invariance.
In time invariance, what this means is that you can shift around the signal, U that you're passing in, and you will get an output that is respectively time shifted from relative to the time shift of the input. So what that means from the mathematical perspective, if you were to write it down, is that if you were to delay right, a signal, say like you had some signal that was, that was wavering through. So you had a signal that initially looked like this, starting at zero, and you were to time shift it, right? you were to delay it by some value tau, so now it looks like that, where this is tau. Then the output of this system, of a time invariant system, would also be delayed by tau. And so if the output of such a system for the non-shifted case looked like this, just as an example, then when you pass the time shifted value, it's gonna look like this, where this is tau. That's what it means to be time invariant. It means that you're gonna get the same output no matter when you pass the signal in. That's what a time invariant system does. A time variant signal will send a different output, right? Have a different Y of T depending on when a, a U of T was put in. Right, uh, a simple explanation of a, of a time variant system, for example, would be the politeness of somebody when they greet you on the phone or the politeness of strangers when they greet you on the phone when you call them uh, at various times of the day. If you call someone at, say, 2 p.m., you'll, you'll be greeted with a, typically a polite hello. Whereas if you call that same person at, oh, I don't know, 2 a.m., you might not get a polite hello. You might get an angry hello or a panicked hello. All right? That's a, you know, very it's a stretch, but that's an example of time varying output to fundamentally the same input, which is a call. The, but the key is that they're happening at different times. So that's not a time invariant system. These two combinations of linearity and time invariance, when constraining the properties of the system that's being looked at, and you're only looking at systems that are time invariant, linear time invariant, restrict the scope and um, properties of, of systems in a manner that make them very amenable to understanding using simple mathematical techniques. And so it's critical that LTI systems are understood first before more complex systems are, are, under, uh, are, are analyzed, such as nonlinear systems or time-varying systems, which are a much more complicated beast.